evening, uh, everybody. Welcome on this uh, webinar that I will try as much as possible to be interactive. Uh, not easy because the webinar is not easy, but I will do my best. Welcome back to the one who were yesterday. Welcome to the news. Uh, and now, if you allow me, I will share my, my screen. Yes, it's okay. Okay. So I will optimize for, oh, okay, I will share my screen. And now, all right. So, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you very much to Mohammed for this uh, great opportunity for me to speak uh, with all of you and to have this uh, webinar. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, during Corona time, we don't have the possibility to travel. So, what we can do about the travel? Ah, okay. We found a solution. We can talk about the traveling. Anyway, this is what we can do as a referee, as coaches. So we can talk about traveling during the Corona times. Uh, before starting of this uh, presentation, uh, I want to tell you that uh, all the clips that we will see, almost all the clips uh, will belong to teaching material because uh, it's really important to, to send you and to show you something which is very clear. Uh, traveling violation is uh, something that uh, many times we have a lot of problem to recognize and when we we are taking a lecture about traveling or and about uh, any other rules we need to give clearly indication clearly the guidelines we have to be to work with the black and white then when there are gray situation then comes the ability of the referee the skills of the referee but so tonight we will see only black and white situation when we talk about Traveling, first of all, we need to talk about the rule. The rule is the number 25. All of you, players, if there are players, referees, uh, coaches, uh, fans, knows and have an idea about what is traveling. It's an illegal movement of the foot, uh, which has some uh, restriction according uh, to some principle. So that's why I need your, your help immediately. And I am kindly ask you, as Mohammed was mentioning, to, to go on menti.com and, uh, and go and put this uh, code, which is 581157. Then we will uh, watch all together one clip. And I will need to, you to make a Call. If you are a referee, you make a call, but even if you are a coach, it's a welcome, uh, your, uh, your help. So we will watch together one clip, Alster. and I want to know your opinion. It's a long, long way back from here. We can do with this one, guys, way off from Pearson to the right of the basket, recovered by Ware. And McGann will look to attack. The Cavalier's going to the trouble. And they did they get it. Okay, if you can go kindly go on menti.com 581157. I want to need your I want to know your opinion. What is your call here? It's a travel violation, it's a regular play, or I don't know, can be. Let's go. We have uh, two minutes. If you can do this, it will be very nice just to start our our lecture. I'm happy that nobody was asking, can I see again? Because uh, in the game, we cannot see two times. Let's go. We are waiting, waiting, waiting. I hope some answer will come. So, uh, someone have problem with uh, this program, this Zoom in Iran because they uh, use a VPN. Maybe oh, okay. they have uh, some problem to see uh, okay. this video. Yes. Good. Regular play, travel violation. Let's go for just to have an idea about what is your opinion about this. Oh, 
five or four, two travel for regular play. Oh, good. The travel violation now is rising up, raising up. 50 50. We are 50 50 now. 50 percent, 50 percent. One more minute. And here now we have a problem because if we have two referees on the court ah. and we have different opinion, now it's a problem. <laughs> More travel, five to four. Let's write to 10 if it's possible. If not, we will go. Okay. Ah, oh, very nice. 50 50. Now, regular. Very good. Okay. I think that if you want to continue, this will be for me. It's completely anonymous, so this is not a problem. Uh, nobody will uh, know who was saying a travel or a regular play. It's just for us, it's just an exercise that you can use any time that you want also in your clinic, uh, in your uh, webinar, whatever. This is uh, free of charge. It's really something which is useful. And it's also very useful because uh, the person who are on my side have an idea about how the people is looking at the play situation. And as you see now, we have 11 answers and we have uh, five on one side who say traveling and five and six who say no traveling. Let's let's analyze again the clip, and we will go together to understand what is the correct solution. So with this clip, we are going inside the rule. This is a player, as you can see, who is receiving standing. This is not a moving player. So according to this, we have to apply what we call the old rule. And as you see here, he's receiving with one foot on the floor, which is the left foot. And this left foot is his pivot foot, because he's showing me that his pivot foot. According to the rule, I cannot raise up the pivot foot until my ball is leaving the hand on the hands of the player. And if you see now, I'm raising the foot but my, my, the ball is still on my hand. So this is a travel violation according to the rule, which is old rule. This is the, the traveling rule for the player to receive standing. Pivot foot is the left. That's why we need to have the eyes on the, the feet of the player. I'm raising up the pivot foot and the ball is still in the hand of the player. So this is a travel violation that the referee correctly called. But this was just a small example of what we, we will do tonight. So, travel. And we go immediately inside. This is a player, as we saw, which has a standing. He's receiving the ball standing, so the pivot foot is the one who is in contact with the floor. And when I decide what is my pivot foot, I can move the other and I can raise up the pivot foot only in case of shot or pass, but I cannot land again with the ball in the hand. So I can pass, I can make a shot for a field goal, I, may, I can jump on the pivot foot, and when I come back, when I return to the floor, I need to leave the ball. Otherwise, this is travel violation. So this is very easy for us. So this is the, the example of the pivot foot. So I can, one, one time that I choose, my pivot foot, this must be on the floor and I can move around with this and then I can jump off on the pivot foot but if I come back the ball had to leave my hands because otherwise this is a violation. The same is happening like in this clip when I have to start the dribble. If I receive stationary and I show and I immediately show what is my pivot foot to start the dribble, the pivot foot cannot be lift it before the ball is released the hand or the hands of the player. This is something that we all know, but the difficulty is, is to have the eyes in the correct point in the correct moment. 
This is another example that is from FIBA teaching material. This player, if you see the standing, is exactly the example. It's very similar to what we were watching now in the clips. Pivot foot is the left, then she's raising up the foot and the ball is still on the hand. This is something which is illegal. This is the rule new. But then we have the news. In 2017, there was some uh, intro new introduction in the rule. And uh, the new introduction in the rule uh, were regarding the player who catched the ball while he is in, in progressing or upon a completion of a dribble. So for the first time in our basketball rule, in FIBA rule, we start to talk about zero step. Zero step, just to clarify, is the foot on the floor or both foot, both feet on the floor when I receive the ball. This is something which is a new introduction, but it's also true that I can receive the ball when I am in the air and when the player in the air. And for us, for simplify also our job, the zero step, if we want to introduce the zero step also for the player in the air, we have to consider that moment as zero. So in the moment that the player will come back to the floor, for us, this will be step one. So for the first time from 2017, we start to talk about zero step, which is really something which is more close to the real basketball player. And to give also more consistency to our decision. So if we have a zero step, then we have for sure the step one. So if zero step is the, the foot or the feet, when I, I gain the control of the ball while I am moving, this is the new, now the next foot who touches the floor after the control becomes the step one. And this step one is also my pivot foot as a player. Then I can do also step two. And this is the biggest new of the, of the rule. And then I can shoot or pass. But then we will go through very deeply with this kind of, of situation. The biggest new and uh, the revolution about this, uh, this uh, new rule introduced in the 2007 is the stop on step one. So if I am a player and I am in moving, I am in motion and I receive a ball while I'm moving, so I'm not standing, and then I come to the stop with my first step, then I have a big advantage that I can choose my pivot foot. I can have my pivot foot on zero or I can have my pivot foot on one. And this is a big revolution about the rule. For sure, then after the zero step, I can also land with both feet simultaneously. And then again, as a player, I can have the possibility to choose what is my pivot foot. And this is also very important for us to understand when the player is gaining the control of the ball, so zero step, and then when he's going to have the step one with one floor only or both, flips, both feet simultaneously. This is really something which is the, the biggest changing and the biggest revolution of the rule. Then I can also stop on the step two. This is allowed now. I can also step, stop on the, on the step two. But then if I jump off one foot and then I can land with both feet simultaneously for the second step, this is great. But in this moment, I don't have any more a pivot foot. So I can jump again, but I cannot land again with the ball in the hand. Nothing changed with the new rule for the player who received the ball while he is in air. That's why we consider the player who received the ball in the air like zero step. This player can land with both feet simultaneously and then we'll have the chance to choose the pivot foot or he will land with only one feet. And the first feet who will be on the floor after the receiving of the ball in the air will be his pivot foot. This player has no right, like the player in motion, to have zero one. This nothing changed. 
But this is also important to understand when a player is receiving the ball in the air and when he's receiving the ball running and standing. Uh, for this, I want to show you one, one clip to clarify this example. And then we will also have a lot of clips uh, about this. This is a player who will receive the ball jumping on the feet. We will have the player here. We have a very good replay. Please check this clip and we will have a situation that most of the time happen when we are missing a travel. This is a player, as you see, who is receiving in the air and then land with both feet simultaneously. In this moment, this player can choose his pivot foot. And now he's choosing. He's having a reverse. He chooses the pivot foot. The left foot is his pivot foot. So now I have to apply what we call the old rule. This is not the player who is receiving in motion. So now to lift the pivot foot, he needs to lift the ball before the pivot foot is raising up from the floor. And this doesn't happen. This is a travel violation. And as you saw, we have two referees here. One is uh, check the lead is calling foul, defensive foul. The trade is calling traveling. And here we have, we have, this is not the topic of tonight, but we have a very good example of communication among the referees. And now we are talking about what happened on the court. So we need to decide what happened first, travel or foul. And this is really a very good example when we have two different decisions. The two referees are meeting themselves on the court to have the correct decision. You see, the trade is calling traveling. The lead is calling foul. And then we come back and we finish with the correct decision, which is the travel. What is really important and is something that will come all the time, one missed travel in a one versus one situation, 90% of the time, the, 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 the following is a personal defensive foul. That's why it's really, really important to have the eye in the correct moment when the player is receiving the ball, understanding if it is a moving player, if it is a standing player, if it is a player with one feet on the floor, two feet on the floor, or he is a player in the air. The other bigger revolution with the step zero it is also to start the dribble while moving. So if I receive the ball using the step zero, so I gain the control, I can release the ball before the second step. This is something which is completely new, as I told you, but is also really connected with the real basketball. And then we will see also uh, a clip. And this is the picture, and then we will see also the, the clip. So the player is moving, the player is running. He's uh, receiving the ball with the left foot, on the floor, so this is step zero. Then he has a step one, which is the right foot, and then he's releasing the ball before the second step left. And this is a legal action. I think it's absolutely correct in this moment to see exactly this, uh, how, to, how, how is going this kind of clip. This is, as I told you, official clips from FIBA. This is something which is similar. You see, we are calling traveling. It's true, these clips are from Olympic Games in Rio. For us, in, that, in this moment, it was traveling. The player didn't understand. But this is absolutely a legal play since 2017. And it's something for the show of the basketball. So, control the ball, zero step. Step one, I start the dribble before the second step, legal. And then we have also the continues. Then I collect the ball, zero step, one, dunk. Legal play.
we will now watch other clips to to see how this kind of example i think it's also really important to know how to do this is again is a stationary player who start the dribble and this also you will see is a legal action Again, we are calling a travel, and this is correct travel. This is the example. Left, leaving. This is old rule. Player receive the ball stationary. Pivot foot is the left. I'm, I'm raising the pivot foot before leaving the ball from the hand. This is travel violation. This is another example of receiving while I am running. This is the example of the picture. The fancy rebound. Again, we are calling the violation, but this is legal play. And now we will see. I'm receiving the ball, zero step on my left, right, step one. I'm releasing the ball before the second step. This is a legal play. This example is uh, happening a lot of time and is creating a lot of problem in our officiating and is regarding the post-play situation. When the player is uh, gaining the control of the ball after a dribble and is moving towards the basket. You will see now this movement which looks illegal, but this is absolutely a legal movement, a very skillful movement, and we cannot penalize players for doing something which is legal. That's why we need to have their eyes in the proper way. Again, now you will see the player is dribbling one against one. I'm closing the dribble, so zero step on the left, one, to jump shot, legal. And here we are canceling a basket which should be valid. And we are penalizing one player who is doing correctly his fundamentals. And this is something that we cannot accept. This is another example, very difficult for us to detect and to understand and to see, but that's why we need to be trained on this kind of movements. It's a player who receive and start immediately the layup before without dribbling. Here, the referee was not calling good. And this is another interpretation of the new, it's 0-1-2. It's absolutely correct movement. In 2016 was a violation, now no more. And now we will see again. I'm controlling the ball with the left foot. Foot step one is the right one, two, jump shot. Yeah. Legal action. The last one for this small section of video is uh, regarding the spin movement. Thanks to the introduction of the zero step, now it's clear that the spin movement is something which is legal. If done correctly with the sequence zero, one, two. So it's a step zero on the left, step one, right. Now I have the right to make the step two, super. And now I have to leave the ball before going back to the floor, legal play. Absolutely legal play. Hope. Let's continue. So we have some special situation. And I would like to say that as a referee, we are quite good in this kind of play. 
The special situation is that the player cannot touch the floor for two times with the same foot or both feet after collecting the ball. So the zero step can be on the right. I cannot have right, right. I cannot have left, left. This is absolutely a violation. And it's really a big advantage for the player who is doing this. So if I'm collecting the ball and my zero step is on the right, my step one cannot be right. My step one cannot be two feet simultaneously because also this, this you know, sorry, this is legal. But I cannot have right, right, left, left. And because of this, I want to show you one very, very good example of correct call uh, by the referee of an example of uh, this kind of play. And it's very common, it was very common in the past, now start to lose this habit because they, we are very good in this. Right, right, and basket. And we cancel the basket correctly with the big surprise of the player. The player are surprised because they don't know the rule. But as you will see, this is a very good call made by the referee. Because the player now is jumping right, right, left. And this is really a big, big advantage. Correct call by the referee. I show you again. It's right, zero step. And step one is again right. Violation. Don't wait. This is a call that we need to do immediately without any problem. And to do this, we need to be again with the eyes in the, in the situation. This is the rule itself, which is very simple. It's difficult to apply, but the rule itself is really simple. But because of this, I, every time I like to give to the referee, to my referee, when I'm doing clinic, when I'm doing... Uh, uh, online uh, when I'm doing on-court training, some officiating tips. So we need to train also ourselves. So what, how can we fix uh, better, how we can deal better with this situation? So I have to ask to myself, if the player receives while moving, super. I need to start my counting from zero. This is my automatic counting. The player is receiving while moving, okay, I will start from zero. So I know that he can do the zero step. If the player is receiving in the air, I, start for, I will start to count from one. So the first foot on the floor is number one, and I have to know that this will be the pivot foot. No question. If I'm ready to this, if I see one player receiving in the air, immediately I have to know and to realize and to be ready that the moment that he will land on the floor, this feet, this foot or both feet can be the pivot foot. Again, tip. I will receiving with both feet on the floor. So I am a standing player and receiving with both feet on the floor. Very easy for us. He can choose the pivot foot. But the moment that he chooses the pivot foot, he cannot change anymore. This is his pivot foot. And he, this is the pivot foot and I need to put my eyes there. Because remember, the player are training themselves to defend the pivot foot. And probably the coach Mohammed knows better than me. The coaches told, tell to the player that they need to defend the pivot foot. That's why if I am a player, I'm defending the pivot foot, and then the offensive player is changing the pivot foot, automatically I will commit a personal foul. There is no chance to officiate one against one when I'm targeting, I'm, I'm guarding one pivot foot, and the offensive player is changing this. Automatically I will, have, I will make a, a, a defensive foul. That's why it's really, really important for us to detect immediately the pivot foot. I will show you now for this another, another clip because uh, I think that uh, to see the situation is uh, absolutely much, much better. You will see now the player who is receiving the ball standing with both feet on the floor in the post play here. He's receiving. He's receiving the ball standing, and immediately he's showing me the pivot foot. Now I know that the pivot foot is the left. And now one against one, and I'm changing the pivot foot. And this is a big advantage. Luckily, there is no foul, but this is a big advantage. And it's not the topic of tonight, 
but because I'm talking now with superior referee and the expert referee, now here, why the referees are not detecting this pivot foot? Because we have two referees who are moving in the same time in the same play. This is mechanic, this is IoT. And I would really love to talk uh, with you again about mechanic or IoT. And this is a problem of fundamentals. And if we don't have fundamentals, it's really difficult then to apply the fundamentals of the play of basketball. Here we have two referees who are moving. So the trail is leaving to the play to the, to the lead who is coming. The lead is leaving the play to the trail because he knows that he cannot see. So nobody now is uh, taking care about the play. And then we have a very big travel and we have no call by the two referees. The last tip. The last tip is this. If the player is starting a dribbling while he's moving, great. Now we have to know that he, he can release the ball before he will do the second step. This is something that we need really to train ourselves mentally and to be ready to what's happening. And to do this, the best exercise is going on the court, now we cannot, but training also with a lot of clips, watching and training our eyes to detect the pivot food and to, to distinguish the situation, standing player, moving player, dribbling player, and, and, every, and, and all these kind of, of situation. So, 30, 33 minutes, I would like to say that now I need you, really. And if you have uh, any question, uh, I'm ready. I think that we, we were, I was talking about the topic uh, general, but if you have any kind of question, if I was not clear, if you need any clarification, I'm here. And all the time that you need, we will talk and I will try to answer and to fix your doubt. Thank Mohammed. you so much. Uh, if there's uh, any question, let me know, please. Uh, Mr. Peter, open your mic. I okay. I will. I will stop sharing first, my, my screen. And first then of I'll... all, first of all, good evening to everybody. This is the first. Second, I only have small remark to the last situation. Uh, as Roberto said, this is not the topic of the of the evening, but the key is that there was a late rotation. So we have to be concentrate and evaluate the play, especially in the, in the lead position. So if I, am, if I am observing and I'm anticipating the play, I cannot, cannot miss this such a situation. We have to be on time. This is absolutely correct. And it was big, big advantage for the offensive player because we missed an absolutely clear traveling violation. And second remark is, uh, as uh, Roberto said, there is we call we, we miss the traveling violation and we call the foul, but we have also extension of this because always the traveling mostly is the first. After we have a foul, we have a basket and we have the bonus. So this is even even much much stronger stronger penalty against the against the team and in the favor of the team which was violating. So and. My remark to the when we are we are training ourselves for the watching the play, we need to open our angle not only to the wide but also to the vertical. So and again, Roberto will later come to this for sure in, in his uh, next lectures like uh, IoT. So keep the distance to the play and open your view angle also also vertically, not only horizontal, because. We have to make a definition of the pivot foot, and after we can make the correct decision. That's it. Thank you, Peter. Nothing to add. I think uh, what you said is uh, completely correct. Uh, all our <coughs> decision comes from a combination of uh, things. The first thing is the knowledge of the rule. This is the basic for us as a referee, but then it's also regarding the position, how, where we are, and it's also this is not enough, 
because we can have excellent position, but our eyes can look something which is not happening or can look some, in some place which is not uh, necessary. So where our eyes are looking at. And especially in the traveling violation, it's really, really important to make an exercise for us. It's immediately when we see a player who receiving the ball, if he's standing, if he is moving, we need to do dan dan. We need to do this pop up because if we have the space. So I need immediately to detect the pivot foot. And if I if I talk to myself and I say, this is what I was doing when I was referee. Any time that the player was receiving the ball, I was telling to myself, left, right. It's, it's a self-talking, but it's really useful. Because now, if or both, I can also say both. And if I say this to myself, then automatically, because we know the rule, I know what he can do, especially what he cannot do. So it will be much easier to have the correct solution. Uh, one question from uh, Mr. Arian. Thank you so much, uh, dear Roberto. I have a question. Would you please uh, explain controlling the ball while a player uh, is progressing? When is the exact moment that we consider it controlled ball? Uh, because they may cover a fumble or such thing uh, that causes the player to take more steps before controlling the ball in their hand. Or hands. Thank you, Arian. I hope to, to mention correctly the name. Thank you for this great question. Because uh, when we are talking about uh, traveling, but this is also when we are talking about uh, yesterday, we were talking about fake, but okay, we are talking about violation, eight second violation, three second violation. There, is, uh, there must be one condition the team must have the control of the ball. And if there is a fumble, it's not a control from the player. So a control of the ball is when the ball is uh, resting on one hand or both hands. So the player is able to control the direction of the ball, to direct the ball for start the dribbling or for making a pass. So I am controlling the ball in the moment that the ball is uh, resting in one hand or both hands. This is the controlling of the ball from one player and the controlling of the ball of the team. And then, if it happened, and can happen, that I'm running, and I, I, I'm not able to establish an immediately control because the ball is slippery, or I, I'm not able to control it the ball, then there is no rule about traveling, because there is no control of the ball. And here is also our knowledge of the basketball, because can be a player who intentionally doesn't want to control the ball. And this is our, uh, our skills to understand when it's something that is uh, regarding the basketball or is something which is intentional for the player. I hope that I, understand, I answered this uh, kind of question. Uh, if there is another question, let me know, please. Is it a pleasure to see you again, can um, Mr. Wonder, hey Roberto, it's a big pleasure to see you again. Can you explain about the gather step? The gather step is uh, what we were mentioning. It's when I, I collect the, the ball with one, one uh, feet on the floor, so step zero, and then my next, next uh, step is with the same foot. So this is, was uh, the clip that we were showing. So the gather step is I, I'm, I'm dribbling the ball, I collect the ball with the uh, step zero left, for example, I cannot have the, the next the feet on, foot on the floor with the same, with the same uh, left. So this is the, the gather step. Any question? From that example that you, you just gave right now. Yes, okay. Uh, Roberto, uh, it would be nice if you have any clip. Any question? Let me check all cameras. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, Malamas Janis is asking if I have some clips regarding fumble. Uh, no. I, in this moment, I, I, I need to, 
to go through my data and <laughs> I will lose uh, one hour to check uh, if I have something. But I don't, I don't remember if I have some clips regarding the fumble. But I promise that if I have, I will publish on, uh, on YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel for sure. Um, so Peter says, uh, can you return back to gathering ball in the air, both feet in air? Ah, okay. So when I receive the ball with both feet in the air, what is the question? Mm. Yes, gathering ball in the air, both feet in air. If I receive the ball in the air, how to say? This is something which is common not to say. The new rule regarding step zero cannot be applied. So if I receive the ball with both feet in the air, it means that I will land. And in the moment that I will land, the, the first foot who will be on the floor will become automatically the pivot foot. And I can land with both feet simultaneously. Yes, I can, because I, I like in the clip that I was anymore it's like a player who is receiving standing is exactly the same and we apply the same concept of the people that the player who is receiving standing for the player who is receiving with both feet in the air we cannot apply the zero step Thank you. Uh, any question else? Mr. Peter? Yes. Open your mic. Okay. Uh, the meaning was when I'm stationary and I jump in the air and I receive the ball, this is clear. But when you are on the move, when you are moving, you can also receive the, the ball when you are with the ball feet in the air. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, it is not very, very often. This is not very often, but can happen. And afterwards, we are a little bit, especially the referees, not us, <laughs> referees are a little bit in the trouble. We, when, is the, when, is the, when, is the, when they have to count the step zero? Because when I am on the move, we have to apply the same principles like when I am touching the foot. So when I am, so we are, we are taking into consideration the foot when I was jumping in the air before the gathering the ball, or after I land on the on the floor. It's uh, it, it's not easy. <laughs> I understand. Not easy, but it's very simple. It's not easy, but on the same time, it's very simple. Okay. To make it simple, we are teaching the referees that uh, for sure there can be a moment when the player is moving and is receiving the ball, when one of one foot or both feet are off the floor for two centimeters. But we are not a hunter traveling. Oh, of course. Conventionally, conventionally, we say, and this is something that now it's absolutely clear for all the basketball community, we say that when a player is receiving while moving, while running, we consider one foot on the floor okay it's okay. completely different always always jumping to receive a pass this is something which is completely different and if i am jumping i'm not running yes understand it's jumping, clear. there is if you see one one runner there is always one moment when both feet are not on the floor but we cannot during a game go there with a the centimeter and check ah it was uh, two centimeter off the floor with both feet this right. is not a job this is a uh, basketball this is As robert uh, uh, mr robert played uh, says a very clear presentation it is good to see that you are looking so well during this difficult time mr robert good evening nice to see you <laughs> mr robert bald is a great 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 person nice to see you thank you for the message and uh, Mr. Imran uh, says, please show some videos of uh, stationary moments. Is it possible to you right now? Or? Stationary moment, movements. I think that we saw already uh, something, but we can, we can go, I, I can see now because I prepare some, some clips, uh, but 
I think stationary movement, I think uh, it was the first clip that we were already watching. And just to see it again, I think is I have to share the video. Sorry. Wait a second. No, I need to share the video before because now yes. I don't, I'm not sharing anymore. Share the screen. Uh, I will share. I think it's correct if we are, if we will watch again the first clip, which was, uh, in my opinion, very, very clear, but we had some problem. This is a typical example of a player who is receiving standing. And just to talk about uh, fundamentals, you see here again, what is the problem regarding the referees? Because we need every time to analyze. When you are looking at your games, at your clips, uh, whatever you are doing on the game, or if you are looking at some games to understand how to make the correct call, we need also to, to see what are doing the referees. If you see now, the trail referees is moving when he's not necessary to move. Because now you will see the pass out and the referee without any reason is moving. In this way, he cannot see the pivot foot of the player or it's very difficult for him to see the, the pivot foot of the player. We have a center who is doing a great job here because he is standing, he is looking at the play and he is able to see immediately left pivot foot. And then this player who is receiving standing is starting one against one. You see, the defensive player is going to defend the pivot foot. But if I'm moving the pivot foot, then the consequence is a personal foul. There is no question. No question. But luckily, you see the difference between the center. Now we talk about technique. It's not about traveling, but I think it's also important. The, the, the technique of the center and the technique of the trail. Here we have a referee who is deciding standing. I'm not moving. I see the situation and I call immediately. Here we have one referee who is going backward to the game. And, and now he will call. But this is not calling even. You say, ah, good call, bravo. Thank you very much that you saw the, the play because I didn't see at all. You see the trail, what he's doing. That's why we need to anticipate the play. And here the referee is, uh, is like a surfer who is following the, the waves, is not leading the waves. I'm following the waves. And this is not our standard referee. The standard referee, our referee, are the referee who are anticipating the play, are stationary, and then are having the decision stationary. This is a great example of individual technique this is a great example of poor technique. And that's why who has the great technique is able to have also a great and correct solution and correct uh, decision. I think it's also important uh, for this uh, attendance uh, to, to talk about these things because again, now we are talking about the traveling. Yesterday we were talking about the fake. I hope we will have opportunity to talk about other topics. But before our decision, there is our movement on the court, our positioning, and where we are looking at. This is the key. Uh, thank you. Uh, other question from uh, Mr. Mohamed Shala. sharing my screen. Thanks, Mr. Roberto. I have a question. What is your opinion? Uh, Stop sharing. I will read the question. Mohamed uh, Shalan said, thanks, I have a question. What is your opinion about twice called, for example, A1 received the ball in the air and landed with both feet. He left his right foot after that he left another foot in this time. B1 committed an sportsman like foul. The center referee is called an sportsman like foul and the lead referee is called traveling violation. Is that right to cancel an sportsman like foul for the traveling happening firstly? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because uh, this is, uh, we need to understand what's happened and the, the sequence of the situation. The travel is coming before the foul. So we go, we talk, and the travel is something which happened before. So nothing can happen after the, 
the travel. And probably this unsportsmanlike foul, unless it's a, a punching, unless it's something which is outside of the spirit of the game. And we are talking about uh, grabbing, holding, and which is the consequences of a missed call by the traveling. So, absolutely yes. From Aya. The player is falling down on his knee and his foot. And when he tried to stand, he used his foot. So, this considered traveling, even his foot. Both feet on the floor, or which we consider pivot, his knee on the foot when he fall down. Uh, if a player is falling down on the knee, so we can see the traveling. He can stand up. If he's falling down, if he can stand up, only if he is dribbling. He can stand up, but be before he needs to start to dribble, otherwise a violation, no question. Uh, so, you read a uh, other question, yeah? From Aya. Aya, yes, I was answering about this. There is... Super. Okay. okay. Uh, if there is another question, let me know, please. Pleasure to have you again, uh, Mr. Roberto. Uh, Thank you so much for taking out your precious time to attending us and uh, sharing your knowledge for us, for every uh, one that uh, is here. Uh, so, uh, guys, I uh, write my YouTube channel and chat. Please subscribe that and uh, stay tuned to watch uh, both videos of uh, Mr. Roberto's uh, webinar. Yeah, yesterday topic and today's topic. Uh, so, uh, we will see you all again uh, maybe after a week uh, i will write on groups and also facebook and uh, telegram and instagram and uh, mr roberto will uh, share it on uh, his instagram also yes uh, thank you so much again uh stay safe all have a good time see you again Hope thank you thank you thank you very much uh, to everybody thank you for uh, the question and it was really nice and see you next week with the iot it will be a big pleasure for me to talk about iot i really believe in iot so it's yeah. great 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 see you again thank you very much stay, stay safe everybody stay safe. ciao peter, ciao, peter.